Hi everyone, and welcome to the first fully online Godokan event. My name is Remy Verscheld, and I'm the project manager and maintainer of the Godot Engine project. And it's customary for me for such events to give a few words to welcome everyone. So uh, for this online one, I'm doing the same. And I'd like to just give you some key facts about uh, the Godot Engine. But first, I'll uh, talk a bit about uh, the novelty of this fully online event. And uh, I'll try to keep it brief because we have more than seven hours of high quality content from close to 20 speakers. So I want you to be able to dive right into uh, the interesting topics that they are covering. But first, yeah, it's quite an installment this year that uh, Godocon is going fully online. So since 2017, I've been organizing many Godocon events uh, on uh, on site, so like we had some in uh, Belgium and in Poland and in France, uh, but due to the global situation uh, this year, we decided to go online like most other events. And it's actually the first event that I am not organizing myself. Um, and I'm really thankful to having had this amazing events team to prepare the event um, that you are now uh, viewing which is composed of Aina, Ilaria, Julian, Wojciech, jo Joan, Hugo, and Heinpeter. And they've all done a very amazing work to uh, make the call for participation, review the proposals, talk with the speakers, collect pre-recorded talks, edit them, and now uh, host all of this for you. So I hope it's the first of many because I think it's going to be a nice format for sharing knowledge in the Godot community and we had more than 70 proposals and could only select a handful so there's a lot of quite interesting proposals that would still benefit from having um, future events to be able to be uh, presented to the community. Another key fact is that this makes Godocon a lot more accessible to all users uh, all over the world. Uh, you don't have to travel to our Brussels events to talk, so it's um, it's much better both for speakers and for um, attendees. So this event will be a series of pre-recorded talks. Uh, so there will not be an interactive Q and A on the stream. However, we will have dedicated chat rooms for every single of the talks, where you can exchange with the other users who attended the talk, and you can talk with the speakers if they are available um, at this time. But first, let's dive into a few key facts about uh, the Godot community and its growth over um, the past year. So Godot has been steadily growing since, since 2014. Uh, you can see on this graph, which is the Google Trends for the Godot Engine search token, that it's early on our growth uh, almost since uh, the open sourcing and with peaks whenever we have a big release. And this growth is also translating in a big growth of the community platforms that we have, such as uh, Discord and the subreddit, which have both doubled in size in one year. Uh, so it's a um, pretty big increase. And we also have now over 5,000 games published on each I.O. with the Made for Godot, Made with Godot um, label. So this is an optional metadata that users can select. So that means not all games actually mention that they are made with a specific engine. So we expect that there are actually a lot more games than 5,000 which have been made with Godot. And this community, as I'm saying, is making a lot of games, uh, but is also making a lot of very good, high quality um, games which usually take a lot of time to make so we are starting to see them being released now uh, we had a lot of interesting releases in 2020 and there's a lot of very cool godo games planned to release in 2021 so we are really stoked to uh, to try them and to see how they find their audience uh, because these kind of games and big projects can really also help the engine to um, demonstrate that it can be used for complex and challenging pro projects. 
And thanks to our contributor, Hugo, we now have a nice showcase page on the Godot website where we can list those. And uh, we will add more in the coming weeks as we had some interesting submissions already for new projects to, to add. And uh, we also keep seeing new projects come up um, on social media. Then I'd like to talk about contributors because growth of the Godot community also means a growth in the number of contributors we have. And that makes the whole community very healthy because we all benefit from each other's contributions to the engine. So we have a very active developer community with more than 1,300 unique contributors. That means people who have contributed at least one patch to the game uh, source code, the game engine source code. So on the engine repository itself, it does not take into account the other sub projects that we may have, like the documentation or the demos and stuff like that. And we have among those more than 30 core contributors who are the contributors who have gained so much experience over the years that they are now owners for some specific parts of the engine uh, where they are so experienced that they are the ones um, doing the most of the changes or reviewing the changes that contributors are making in these specific areas uh, that they know well. So these core contributors are really instrumental to the development of the engine because it's such a big project that we could not run it just based on the few paid contributors that we have uh, that actually have more time to review things. We still need the help of everyone who can help and especially all those core contributors. Because we still get hundreds of issues and pull requests every month that need to be reviewed. Um, so we get in average 400 pull requests per month. That's a lot of work put in by contributors and that's a lot of work that is needed to review them and merge them and make sure that they work well uh, in the engine. And we're lucky because in 2020, we also had a big increase in our funding situation. So first, uh, I'd like to remind that Godot is a non-profit project supported by the Software Freedom Conservancy, which is a US-based charity. So we receive donations from users and grants or sponsoring from companies, which enable us to hire contributors to work part-time or full-time on the engine. And in 2020, we got an Epic Mega Grant. We got a grant from Facebook Reality Labs for virtual reality work. We got several new corporate sponsors and a steady increase in um, the support we get on Patreon from uh, members of the community, which means that right now we have eight paid part of full-time developers. And in February 2021, we're going to add one uh, with Bastian Oli, we, who is starting um, working on virtual reality and rendering. So it's starting to be a pretty big team for a project that started like that as giving an open source engine to, uh, to the commons. So we're really happy to be able to do this um, with your support. To finish, I'd like to have a quick look at some of the new features that we worked on in 2020. And as you may know, we released Godot 3.2 in February 2020. And then most of the development focus switched to Godot 4.0, which is going to be our next major release. And we're taking this opportunity to really like improve everything we can in Godot by also changing the API. So it's going to have some compatibility breakage. There will be some work involved in porting from Godot 3.2. But that enables us to really make things nicer, more modern, more performant, better optimized, and we have a brand new Vulkan-based rendering engine. We have a complete rewrite of GDScript to be more modern, it's still the same syntax and similar language, but it's also much more performant. We'll have a new tile map and tile set editor that uh, Gilles is working on. And for example, also here you can see uh, we're working on complex text layout so that you can properly render all kinds of text in Godot, including uh, scripts, which we did not properly support until now, such as Arabic scripts or Hebrew. So it's going to be a really, really big release. But uh, we're not forgetting about the 3.2 users who also need 
to have something usable now to ship their games. And so we backport a lot of bug fixes and a lot of improvement to the 3.2 branch so that it keeps getting also better while we wait for Godo 4.0 to be released. So as you can see, there's just a small, uh, I just chose a few examples of features we've been working on for 3.2, but the list is much longer than that. Uh, but I mean, this is for the release that happened after 3.2, so up to 3.2.3, and then there's a new 3.2.4 coming in a few weeks. There's been a lot of work on mobile platforms, like with a new plugin system for Android and for iOS, Android App Bundle support and c -sharp support on iOS, support for the new Apple Silicon, ARM64 based architecture, uh, but also a lot of work on uh, engines that benefit to all platforms, such as a new CPU light mapper for 3D games uh, to have really nice baked lighting. And a lot of improvement to the HTML5 platform with threading and GD native and fixes to audio and a lot more that now enable us to have a web-based version of the engine. Uh, so you can just try Godot directly in your browser and you can use it on the go. And it's especially useful for using in constrained environments where you might not be able to download an executable and run it. So you can just run it in the browser, for example, on a Chromebook or at a university library. Um, there's also WebXR support, which is going to be talked about uh, today in the live stream. And, um, new FBX importer, which greatly improved the workflow to import assets from Maya, among other things. Um, and of course, as I said, hundreds of bug fixes. So the 3.2 branch is probably our most feature packed uh, branch. I mean, it's the first time that we add so many features after a release has been published. So we're quite happy to be able to keep providing nice features to 3.2 users so that the transition to Godot 4.0 can also be smooth and can we can have both versions in parallel for some time. That's it for this uh, introduction and I wish you all to enjoy your GodotCon. So the whole event is going to be a single stream that uh, you are already watching now and you can use the chat platform that we set up to meet the speakers if they are available or all the other users that have attended to a, a talk and that are willing to interested in talking about it. So you can go to chat.godoengine.org and you should be able to um, use your logins from Discord or GitHub to log into it and directly chat with, um, with other attendees of this GodoCon event. That's it. So now let's proceed to watch all the amazing talks which have been uh, pre-recorded by our speakers. I will discover them at the same time as you do, since uh, I haven't checked them out yet uh, during the selection process. And I thank all of you uh, for being part of the Godot community and for attending this event. Then I thank all the speakers for the great um, quality that they are proposing in the different talks uh, that you're going to see. And of course, a big thank you to the event organizers who uh, set up this online event for all of us to enjoy. So have a nice day and goodbye.